This is Stuffy Like, you can call me Ursa, and before I was a person who made videos on the internet, I read engineering. I have a master's degree. I know, they just hand them out to anybody. After that I was, among other things, a private tutor in maths and English and science for secondary school children. And when we were discussing science and we had to talk about electrolysis or the scientific method or whatever, I would often refer to Ben Goldacre's bad science because it was just more fun, or at least less punny than the revision guides. No, seriously, GCSE revision guides are full of puns. I mean, I like puns, but I understand they're not really everybody's thing. But yes, Bad Science. I loved it and I recommended it to pretty much everyone, not just because it's a good read, but because I think it's a crying shame that we don't teach even the basics of epidemiology in schools. I should point out at this juncture that epidemiology is a science of health, like what makes us sick and what makes us well and all of that good stuff. Especially because, as a general rule, we're all completely obsessed with health fads and exercise fads and dieting fads, and yet most of us don't really understand even the basics of evidence-based medicine. And evidence-based medicine is freaking awesome, so we should. Bad Science is, and I use the word advisedly, evangelical on the subject of evidence-based medicine. And it is basically a primer on epidemiology, and it takes you through stuff like how does a trial work? How do we decide if it was a good trial or a bad trial where they cooked the books? What are the tricks that complementary medicine uses to make their stuff seem more appealing? What are the tricks pharmaceutical companies use to make their stuff seem more appealing? What's the placebo effect? What's the nocebo effect? And various other things. The book pokes fun at homeopathy and nutritionism and Gillian McKeith and many other things with wild abandon, and it's sharp and witty and incisive and it doesn't talk down to its audience. A couple of jokes about humanity's journalists tackling science stories aside. And frankly, for their terrible misrepresentation of science in the public eye, they deserve it. The most uplifting thing I found in the book was the explanation of meta-analysis, which is a technique for kind of smushing together the results of lots of small trials to get a bigger and more comprehensive picture. It is such a beautiful and useful and elegant thing that just made me want to run out and buy a pair of Cochrane collaboration blobogram earrings. Apparently those don't exist. There are in the book occasional nerdy statistical moments, but they are so well explained that you won't really feel like you're learning at all. And, you know, you can just skip them if you're really desperate. Ben Goldacre himself is a GP, which is to say American's a general practitioner. You're family doctor, basically. Pharmaceutical companies accuse him of being a shill for complementary medicine, and the complementary medicine lot accuse him of being in the pocket of big pharma. So you know he has to be doing something right. And if you go and read the reviews of Bad Science, there are two major criticisms. The first is they don't like the writing style, which is fair enough. Or second, it doesn't include enough positive examples of whatever it is they are in favour of. A book dedicated to lampooning bad examples of science does not contain enough positive examples of whatever it is they like. Most of the book is insightful and funny and has many examples of humans and our humanness, and I think you should read it, you might like it, and it's possible just to leave it at that. Then again, I should warn you that there is a chapter in there on Matthias Rath, and that is where things take a turn for the dark. In 2008, Rath sued both Goldacre and The Guardian newspaper, though he did eventually drop the case. Why? Well, Ben Goldacre criticised him because he bought full-page adverts denouncing AIDS drugs while promoting his vitamin pills in South Africa, a country where hundreds of thousands die every year from AIDS under an HIV denialist president, and the population is ripe for miracle cures. I said his actions were highly worrying in no uncertain terms. I believe I was right to do so. To give you an example of how this played out in Rath's early career, he took adverts out in newspapers which claimed 90% of patients receiving chemotherapy for cancer die within months of starting treatment, and suggested that 3 million lives could be saved if they stopped having chemotherapy and instead took more vitamins. Actually, even if you don't buy the book, that chapter is freely available online and you should read it, though I warn you, it is chilling. And honestly, because of it, I've never quite looked at complementary medicine the same way since. And it's all very well to believe in homeopathy or reflexology. I have great faith in the power of the placebo effect, and indeed in the power of homeopathy. It is exactly as effective as the placebo effect, which is much better than ineffective. But that's not the same thing as being as good as conventional medicine. In the conclusion to this book, written before I was able to include this chapter, because, of course, you can't really include a chapter about someone who's suing you at the time. I will argue that the biggest dangers posed by the material we have covered are cultural and intellectual. I may be mistaken.
that was kind of a downer. But seriously, read the book, it's really good. Or read the free chapter online and read the blog, which is less cohesive, but still pretty darn funny. Read it. Learn things. And watch Barbie get detoxed by a car battery. And if you like the show and you would like to support me making more videos, then go up here somewhere and click on that if you're on YouTube, because that will take you to my Patreon page, where you can support me for a dollar a month, or five dollars a month, or one million dollars a month. Okay, probably not that much, but still, consider donating. And I will see you next time for something. Actually, I haven't decided yet, but something.